I think I just need to get up on this lid. Where's the mouse? Yeah, that lid is dangerous. Oh. Oh, it's across the room. If we had two of those mouse mice, would they be called mice? Oh, mice's mouses. Like if if you're in a if you're at an Apple store and you're looking at which mouse you want, if you're looking at the entire selection, are they called mice? Probably, right? Maybe. I think that makes sense. Makes sense to me. That's what I would call them. Would you think an Apple customer service person would judge me if I was like, "Hi, where's your mice aisle?" How about an Apple? Would an Apple cus Customer representative judge you, period. Yes. Yeah, that's for sure. That I have an answer to. I don't know about the mice thing. <laughs> okay, we're speeding. We're speeding. We're rolling our way into your hearts. Oh, and we're rolling right in too. Uh, this is episode 150, which means, uh, I thought that seems pretty monumental. That seems monumental. Okay, you said it earlier like it was like it was nothing. And I, was I was waiting like, for this okay. moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we were like, oh, it's episode 150. And I was like, wow, we've done this a hundred times and then half of that again. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It seems bananas. We've done it 150% of the time. You get it. You know, math. Uh, yeah, 150. That's crazy. We're almost, uh, we're almost at 200. Not quite. It, I... I wonder how long ago was our 100th episode? I guess I was back in January, right? No, that was the year. Yeah, 50 is another year from now. 52 weeks. Wow. So we guys. still got another year. Wow. Oh. I don't know if that makes me happier. Or... <laughs> it's a long time. <laughs> yeah, I, I felt like I was about to say like, oh, I bet the next 50 episodes will fly by. But then I was like, that is a whole year away. No, but to be fair, when we started this and if we had heard like, oh, in three years when you're still doing this podcast, we would have been like, what? I would have been the like, same try fucking again. microphones and shit. We would have been like, no, that's impossible. Wow, 150. Yeah. Oh, okay. well, considering it's been it, that was literally a, two and a half years basically an, an anniversary since our 100th episode yeah precious wow. 150. we love a good holiday so um send us some presents okay uh hello everybody welcome how was your thanksgiving right yeah for everyone listening right now to when this <laughs> comes out we have not seen each other since thanksgiving we just got back it was thanksgiving last week uh-huh um, we are still doing these in advance so that way we are chipper and happy and these are entertaining instead of you hearing us when we're on tour and sad look how chipper we are <clears throat> not sad because we're on tour but sad because we are in low jet lit lagged hotels and low lit hotel. <laughs> i did not buy that shitty of hotels okay christine put me in a motel I one time and they not. had the four seasons that's not the truth but we should make that a thing oh like I said, when was that <laughs> when was that i hope like there's a news outlet that picks that up like one co-host treats the other one to a motel you know hey, i book your travel stop complaining um what did i do for thanksgiving you went to Seattle. I did. It was a good time. Yeah. Um, I don't think I, I don't think anything wild happened while I was there. A lot of eating. A lot of eating. I had good pizza. Oh. I went to the Funko Museum. I did see that. Blaze was very, Blaze is obsessed with Funko Pop. Yes. It was a good time. Yeah. I'm not very obsessed with Funko Pops. Um, like I have, I have some, but I've like, they're not like my thing that I collect that I'm like super obsessed with. Yeah, they're definitely a blaze thing for sure. But it was fun to see. I didn't realize how many, I mean, they have a lot. <laughs> I did not realize how that's many. That's what the museum told me. <laughs> <laughs> they had a whole Avengers scene and everything too. It was very cool. Oh, that's how fun. How was your Thanksgiving? Oh, it was good. Um, I went home to Cincinnati for the first time since, oh God, in like seven years, I think, or longer. Wow. Um, for Thanksgiving. Well, you know, we don't do much usually because we're Germans we didn't what did you do instead involve ourselves with any pilgrims um, oh, well i think most of us are wish that worry. that was the we case. did other we did other things uh not me you know my ancestors never mind let's change the subject so <laughs> white people so <suck. laughs> yeah i mean i guess all around nobody none of us are uh in the clear point being um yeah i went home and it was pretty fun and my sister and i got our ears double pierced which you can't well oh she, i saw that on instagram you she guys got her ears her ears pierced for the first time and i got doubles Sorry, I'm fucking with the microphone because it's falling apart. No yeah, so she Let got Let me see hers. your ears. They're under headphones right now. Oh, yeah. So Look the, at those. The blue ones are the new ones, and they get to stay there for six whole weeks until the, I can take the them The blue out. new ears. ears. And so, uh, yeah, that was fun, and she got her ears pierced. She was like, uh, I was like, oh, are you nervous? She's like, no, why would I be nervous? So I was like, because they're shoving a needle into you, but okay. Um, I was nervous. Anyway, so I've that never, was fun. I've never had anyone shove a needle into me unless it was for surgery. Yeah. Surgery? Yeah, like a like a needle 
how many we went to surgery i've had two what are we allowed to talk about it i mean they're they're literally not anything like my wisdom teeth oh oh my god because we were talking about surgery earlier and i was like oh my god like about well my mom just had her ankle replaced so in my head surgery is like this like very big like dramatic oh yeah i've only had very body parts i've been very lucky to only have minimal oh, yeah. me too i had that too but i don't think that's kind of the surgery for me, it is because it's the only time okay. I've voluntarily vol- voluntarily gone to a hospital for someone to remove something off of okay, me. Okay, that's fair. And tonsils. That's fair. Tonsils, I guess, counts too. Um, anyway, point being, uh, yeah, it was fun, and we went to um, we went to nowhere. We went home and ate a lot of food, and uh, I went through some of my old journals, and that was questionable at best because. I was like, oh, these will be fun and emo and silly. And then I went through them. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. I was troubled, dude. I had a hard time. It was very depressing. I got, like, really depressed. Really? Yeah. And you didn't notice it in, except for hindsight? I mean, I knew. I was terribly depressed. I literally read the uh, journal entries, and they were like, they were like, I don't think anything means anything. And I, I oh, was wow. 12. I was like, what is the matter with me? Wow. And then I, I was ta- reading them to my sister, kind of, like, joking around, like, wow, look how dramatic I was. And I wrote poems. That were like about how humanity is worthless. I don't oh know. my it god! It was insane. I was writing these like creepy dark poems, and um, writing this very like Kafka esque stuff. And my sister goes, "How old were you?" And I was like thirteen, and she's fifteen, and she's like, "What?" I was like, "I don't, I don't know, I don't know." <laughs> what I was, was going on when you were thirteen? Oh my it, gosh! I did not have a good time in high school. Let's just put it that way. I, um, I think I had a blast in high school. Oh, we I, had I different lives. Struggled. Yeah, so I just, it made me a little bit sad for my past self, and I was like, I don't think anyone real, or I don't think I realized how bad it was, and I don't think anybody kind of did anything to help me, so I was a little bit sad. But oh, here yikes. I am, I've, I've helped myself in my adult life, and uh, yeah, we're in a better place now, let's just put it that way. I think all of us have something like that, though, where when I look back on my childhood, I'll look at certain aspects of it and i'm like oh i didn't realize how dark and sad that is yeah and yeah that, well children are very resilient too like <clears throat> yeah i was just like blissfully ignorant yeah and now uh there are certain things where i feel like you and i have like not the same different but the same uh when it comes to like some version of like a a dark upbringing and so i'll say things to you and ask someone who is also kind of raised in that environment it's like oh yeah well that's fine like obviously that happened to us but then i'll talk to someone who like had a like a happy blaze and allison are like what (laughs) like their parents are like happily (laughs) married still together they're they're not from like small town drama they don't have like multiple parents yeah and i'll say something to allison she's like that's really sad and i'm like is it i didn't know to, i don't know i'm always like ah, i'm over it like <laughs> trust me i spent six years in my journal talking about it i'm like, fine clearly now. i we we went through it at some point god there was some dark shit anyway i didn't even know why i talked about that but it was um it was a little sounds bit like sad. you had an emotional journey i posted the some of them to yeah some of them to instagram as a, like because they were funny one of them was like renee like doesn't even talk to me anymore and then another one was like patrick stump gets me like they oh were, my God. those ones were hilarious some of them were like i need to burn this and never show anyone <laughs> ever again um anyway so that's kind of a side note i did also want to say that like we posted this comes out in Dece- later in december but we posted our tour dates Yay! we're going on tour um we are going to a lot of fun places we're going to toronto we're <laughs> going to uh, that's all else? that matters um we're going to new york we're going to philly we're going to dc we're going to we're going texas to texas a lot burlington vermont and portland maine which we've never been to mm, yes texas um and i just wanted to say real quick i know a lot of people are distraught because we're not going to florida or michigan or salt lake those were like the three big ones people were upset about um and we were not we weren't able to fit them in but it's not something that we did intentionally a lot of people thought we are dissing them on purpose we're not a lot of people thought that we like just don't like florida no no and we did we literally had six shows there this year i wanted to be like guys no we love you but um you know our shows there as you know we had to cancel three of them um right so that didn't work out quite as well for us so this time around Um, They didn't fit into the schedule. And that was the other thing. We only had room for 25 cities and our booking agent had to find a city with a venue. And, you know, some cities like, for example, Atlanta or something. He's like, I just couldn't find a venue that would fit on a specific date. It just didn't work out. It's not personal. There's a I and I before I had a any. I I don't even know what I'm saying before I was on this side of it where like I'm performing on a stage and like understand some more of the logistics of it. I never understood why 
someone couldn't just come to a city and right. figure it out. But there's a there's lot so to much. it. And we did request with our um, booking manager, we did tell him that we wanted maximum 25 cities. Um, and he did recommend that we go to cities that we hadn't gone to right. in that same calendar year. And since we had just done like Salt Lake City, we had just in Atlanta, we had just, we had just in New, New Orleans, Orleans, Atlanta, Salt Lake. And yeah. we did Florida in March. And so I, so I think there, um, I think his reasoning, his, he's been in the business for a long time. And he's just said that a lot of times you don't want to do a city in the same calendar year twice. Right, right, right. So we, we understand it from that token. So that doesn't mean we're not coming back in the future it doesn't um, and it doesn't mean we had a bad time a lot of people were like did we disappoint and i'm like no also we don't have a, like we have a say we can say like oh we'd love to go but we also said we'd love to go to atlanta it didn't work out right um, we even re we requested because atlanta uh our last I'm, I'm gonna put new orleans and salt lake and atlanta in with the 2019 tour even though they were a couple months later 2020 Oh, 2019. The yeah, 2019 yeah, yeah, yeah. tour. But Atlanta was like our loudest. Right. And I remember thinking like, we definitely have to go back. But apparently since we had just gone, there's like a, to when it comes to booking venues, there's a formula. Yeah, we don't. And he's like, just trust and us. And we're not so. involved. Like, we don't get to say, no, we want, we need that. Like, we can't. Right. We don't know the rules. Also, um, you know, logistically, some cities just don't have room for us certain weekends. Some, it yeah. just didn't fit into a schedule. Um. And so he did work really hard on the tour. And we do have a lot of fun new places we haven't been before. We're coming back to Texas, some other place. We're going to Cincinnati. Actually, we're going to Bogarts, which is the venue um, where I saw my first concert when I was 16. Full circle. Regina Spector. Um, so, and it's in my, it's in my neighbor. Well, I probably shouldn't tell you that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> you guys, I probably already figured that out. Um, um, also, DC, uh, I'm warning you now, if it is already sold out by the time that you are listening to this, it's because my mother probably bought every <laughs> ticket. So I'm sorry. She probably ruined it for you guys. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. And uh, patrons, we that went off great. The patron early access sale. Um, I do know a lot of people on Instagram were kind of upset that mean greets were sold out already. Um, it is because we had a Patreon uh, pre-sale just for yes. patrons to give them kind of like an extra boost since they've been supporting us for so long. Um, and so uh, Patreon that went. People were very patient with me. It was kind of chaotic. And a round of applause to you specifically. I know. I know we can't me? hear them. Yeah. Oh. I know we can't hear them, but everyone like in your own car or office or wherever you are, just kind of do like a little <laughs> clap for Christine because Aww. she handled all of that so gracefully. Like handle like we had gracefully. We a... had a little like a couple hiccups on our end, um, and we were able to figure them out. But when I say we, I mean like Christine and Eva handled it. So Let's thank you guys for. We haven't slept much in the last couple days but thank you for it went great for handling it. thank you em I for appreciate your kind you. words everyone was really kind and patient you patreon folks are are great like good people been, i'm in that facebook group the closed patreon group it is so much fun and like people are just so positive and it's it's amazing um speaking of which we literally never remember to do this uh our patron of the month for december is abby haynes mm. abby hi abby you've been uh, supporting us for a long time so i wanted to give you a shout out thank you so much you reminded me of something i also forgot to do oh can i say one more thing yeah real quick if you're a patron there's something that is coming to you in the mail it might have already arrived but um i don't even know if em knows this I think you do, but you haven't seen it yet. I uh, sent out a little surprise for all our patrons. If you sign up before December. Did I get one? You did. Yay. That's all I care about. Yeah. If you signed on before December, you um, get a special uh, little surprise in the mail. Really small, but um, but yeah, look out for your mailboxes. Uh, I The thing you reminded me to do is I told you that I was going to start remembering to uh, yes. to shout out the person who requested the story this, this week, because the last two weeks mm -hmm. I... Uh, people in our Patreon did request stories and my two stories came from those people and I forgot to list them. So I want to find the person that requested this story this week. And, and if you want to join our Patreon, it's um, patreon.com slash ATWWD podcast. Is that right? Yes. Okay. ATWWD podcast. So we have a good time over there and um, we have fun. We have fun. We have fun. And thank you for being and being so supportive and patient with us this week. Uh, why can't I find this? Hang on. Oh, okay, here. Okay, so this is my story of the week. This is a mythical creature, and this was requested to our... Oh, are we starting? Yeah, I just oh, jumped sorry. in. Okay. Do you have more updates? Um, no, I don't think so. I thought you were going to say the people who requested it last week. Oh, no, I did not find those people. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, I thought maybe sorry. they DM'd you. <laughs> someone, um, someone tweeted out to me about one of them, but I not the other. Got it. Okay, cool. Uh, cool. No, I think that's all I had. I just want to make sure I'm, like, fully ready to absorb your story i have an update what i love you 
That's all. Why is that an update? What was the status before? Uh, it was looking good, not great. <laughs> Just teasing. But we're, we're on the up and up today. I love you too. And thank you for being so kind to me this week. And, and uh, What did I do? I yeah, left you yeah. alone. That was what was so kind. You're, I you're, gave you a break. You're amping me up. You're giving me kind words. You give me five minutes of hyping you up, it's going to get weird. Okay, so this is a shorty but a goody. Okay. Um, this is from, I don't have the real name. Have, but did you screenshot them? That's what I started I did. Doing. I got yeah. nervous, so I screenshot I have, like, pages of them Me now. too. I, well, no one's going to be able to see that, but. Uh, so this is from, uh, your Instagram handle is half underscore awake. Half a, oh, that's me, actually, also. <laughs> I mean, actually, this is just us as yeah, an Instagram you're post. You're speaking for all of us. But so thank you so much for submitting this. And, and to clarify, what we're doing is for all our close friends who are patrons, they get to be in our close friends group. Get to be. Yeah. It's what an honor it must be. Uh, <laughs> if we allow it. Yeah. <laughs> they get to be in our uh, close friends group on Instagram. And so we, in there now, I've still I've still an M's idea, too. We kind of request story ideas to like listen to the patrons and what they want listen to, to the hear. people listen to the people okay Give the people what they want so sorry your turn Go the ahead. people who want this exactly are half underscore awake or just half awake um so this is the story of kushtaka what is that so apparently the other names are uh kustika although it's pronounced kushtaka but it's spelled differently okay um it's this creature is also known as the otter man what the land otter and Alaska's other Bigfoot. Alaska. Alaska, Alaska, okay. Alaska. Okay, okay. Um, so this is native Alaskan folklore. Um, and the story primarily comes from two different tribes of the Pacific Northwest called the, I'm, I'm going to try not to mess this up, the Tlingit and the Tasimshin, Tasimshian oh. tribes. Cool. Um, so other tribes have uh, that are not those two, they have a similar creature as as kushtaka that they call natina and yurayuli so i uh, they might all be the same creature just name different things sure um so here's a quick description about kushtaka 500 pounds same um <laughs> half awake 500 pounds yeah got so it. far this is looking like me um okay 500 pound shapeshifter i don't have that trait no yet. unfortunately that's the one we don't get um supernatural strength yeah that is definitely the truth. am definitely am um supernatural speed and agility in water and can conjure illusions what does that and my favorite thing about where i got this information google um (laughs) in the sentence where i found that information it said they can also conjure illusions this may involve magic it's like oh i have a hunch it involves magic if they're conjuring illusions or it may not apparently the kushtaka can are also telepathic they can teleport at free will and they can even manipulate time and space allegedly so they so, can literally just do whatever the fuck they want they can just do it all that sounds nice for the most part it sounds like they uh are telepathic and shapeshifters and they can conjure illusions which is part of the telepathy where they can envision something and plant it in your mind so you're telepathically hallucinating right um, so those seem to be the, the main things but on, on some smaller sites i found that they can manipulate time and space which Damn. is pretty cool um apparently the kushtaka are bipedal they are uh six to eight feet tall maybe bulletproof (laughs) maybe Uh, maybe (laughs) same with me maybe i'm bulletproof we should probably not test it out though um they are covered in dark fur they kind of do look like a like a bigfoot or a sasquatch just fur all over them um talons on their hands human feet a tail glowing eyes and needle sharp teeth okay not great when the kushtaka is in human form, because remember they shapeshift. Right. When in human form, you can still recognize that it is not a mortal human, but kushtaka, because uh, these creatures do their teeth never change. So there's <gasps> always still needle sharp. There's yeah. So they could be a human with needle sharp teeth, and that's how you know oh, it's kushtaka. Vomitous. What is that called? You were just talking about it with your brother. Oh yes, um, uncanny valley. Yeah, it's like so when something's uh, still off. Something seems off, like a like AI. Typically, mm. it refers to AI. So if artificial intelligence is kind of trying to be human, but you like humans know something's not quite right. Right. It's a little bit eerie. It's like this, but instead in a digital space, it's in a cryptid space. Right. So Kushaka apparently lives in uh, the many waters of southeast Alaska, and uh, they eat fish and mollusks, and they emit a three part whistle. What? That uh, apparently goes low, high, low. That is their whistle. So it was like, boom, boom, boom. Just like that. It sounds like. A or boom. maybe fast, like, boom, boom, boom. Oh. I like, don't know. It sounds like a bird. 
No, can I can't whistle? whistle. I don't know how. I was about to try for the first time I can... on camera. <laughs> Great. You were I... about to try for the first time to whistle? I can't blow out. I can only that blow in. I was going to say, I can whistle inward, but I can't change the pitch or anything. Yeah, I can go. <whistles> Basically, I can like make Same. my mouth small enough that I when I'm like... inhaling, a whistle sound comes Same. out. Same. But I can't actually whistle a tune. Me neither. Okay, good. Glad we're on the same page. Wow. I always say that and people are like, I don't know what that means. But I I literally don't know how to whistle. I cannot do it. I can only do like inward. Also, for a long time, I couldn't snap with my two fingers. and I needed to do it on my ring finger. Really? Yeah. Wow. But I I can't do it with my with my middle finger. And then it blew my mind that other people use their middle finger. I found out way late, like in high school, that people snap their fingers with (laughs) their middle finger. I was like, what are you talking about? You're so weird. Why don't you do it with your third finger? And they were like, okay you're kidding me anyway anyway back to the kushtaka <laughs> i bet they snap with whatever finger they want they snap with their sharp sharp teeth uh so yes they emit a three pitch whistle which either may be a way to communicate with each other or it might put victims in a trance oh. so they're not sure but that it does they do whistle so based on whichever version you're hearing because there's a couple different either through tribes or different regions they all have a different story but Kushtaka, for the most part, can either shapeshift into any creature or only shapeshift from human to otter. Okay. Hence otter man or land otter. Um, so different versions suggest that if he if he can only switch from human to otter, some stories will say that he can shapeshift into any species of otter or a human. And then some stories say he like it's a specific otter and a human that he can change back and forth into. I see. Okay. So sometimes he can be multiple types of otters, but in different towns you'll hear that he can only be a land. It's otter. always a he. There's no like other. So Kush, I don't. I'm. I. I'm pretty sure they are gender neutral, actually. Oh, you're just um. I, bi- bias. You're, I was uh, just being an asshole. Right. Got it. Um. <laughs> so I know that. I do know that Kushtaka is a singular and plural. Like, if I'm talking about a group of Kushtaka, it's multiple people, it's multiple creatures that are Kushtaka creatures. Makes sense. Okay. Um, So they can appear friendly and helpful. So there are some regional stories that say that they're actually nice and they've been known to actually save people that are lost out in the water. But they're actually more often known to be cruel and dangerous, and they are known to turn you into Kushtaka like them. Oh, no. So even if they are helping you out at sea, it's a trap to get you on board oh. with them. Because, I mean, you can just shapeshift into a human, help someone. Oh, I see. Okay. And then all of a sudden turn them into Kushtaka. Uh-oh. So they're being helpful is actually a trick. Um they will save you by turning into a kushtaka, by turning you into a kushtaka so you can survive the cold water. Okay. It's so like if you're floating around the water well, and you're nice. freezing, it's like, okay, well, I'll turn you into an otter. So at least you <laughs> like a big Sasquatch otter. So that way you can at least survive the water. But. That rhymes. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> otter water. Wait a minute. I love it. TM TM. That's our new brand. Um, so. They, so they could, they'll turn you into Kushtaka and you'll think like, oh, this is temporary. No. Once a Kushtaka has turned you into a Kushtaka, you can never be a mortal human again. Oh. So you can now shapeshift into a human with like Kushtaka teeth. Like you can, you'll always be able to turn into a humanoid creature, but basically they are taking away your human na- n- humanness. Got it. Uh, I was gonna say human C, which is not. I like that though. I do. I wish that was a word. It is. Now. So, uh, these tribes uh, often believe that uh, the two that I mentioned earlier, uh, those tribes believe that without a proper goodbye after death, your spirit cannot reincarnate. So they actually think that Kushtaka is evil because it is stifling you from being able to reincarnate with the rest of your family oh like they're keeping you stuck like they're trapping your soul in a kushtaka body no so they may honestly might just try and they might really just try to be helpful and like save you and turn you into a kushtaka so you won't die but they are inadvertently taking right your right away to reincarnate when you pass on interesting but a lot of people say that um, Kushtaka do that on purpose. Like, they want to build their group. And so okay. they will actually seek out people that are lost in the water or in the forest and l- lure them away. So they don't mate. Right. They just 
transform other people? As far as I know, I did not look up their sex habits. Okay. Why? Um, I was, you know, I don't know. That's a good question. That's usually the first thing I look into. <laughs> so sometimes they won't wait for someone lost in the water. They will go out and look into the forest and they're known to uh, imitate cries of a baby uh, or screams of a woman. That's not cool. To lure you in to want to help them, which is also Sasquatch. Um, Sasquatch MO. Really? In some, in some different regions, people think that Bigfoot or Sasquatch will imitate cries, so you'll go looking for them. Why do they want you to look? I thought they don't want you to look for them. You can never find them. Okay, so they just want... It just to bother to you. you. Oh, that would bother me. That's also, though, uh, I think Pete, that's been said also about the Jersey Devil and a few other cryptids. I think most of them, somewhere regionally in the world, there is a storyline of like, oh, they'll imitate cries so you go into the woods, but then you can never find them. Okay. In this case, what, the difference between them and Kushaka is that it's so they can find you they and then lure you away. have agenda. Yes. Right. The, I mean, even serial killers have done that. It's really... That's right. not okay, guys. Don't do yeah, that. Yeah, humans can do that, too, and it's it's Ugh. not good. So oftentimes they'll be seeking out prey on little kids because they're the easiest to lure away. What? So a lot of parents have used Kushtaka as a cautionary tale for wandering off. Sure. Um, unless you can be rescued in time by a shaman, it's pretty impossible to ever no longer be a Kushtaka once you've been turned into one. Wow. That um, sucks. There's, you're never supposed to say their name three times in a row, kind of like Beetlejuice. Kind of like what you just did 40 times in a row? Mm Mm-hmm. Super. Because apparently then you summon them towards you. Fun fact. What the hell, Em? Don't do that. And there is one uh, sighting in 1900 from a gold prospector named Harry Culp. And he had three friends. They were out at um, Thomas Bay, and they saw a colony of Kushtaka. Um... So the Thomas Bay is actually called the Bay of Death because there was a huge landfall that killed 500 villagers back in the 1700s. So it's also known as Devil's County. Fun fact. Oh, my. But apparently he was there. He was looking for quartz. There was a what? Sorry. A, a landfill? A landfall. I think it was like an avalanche or like a, like a ground avalanche. I don't know what a <laughs> landfall is. I imagine it's an avalanche without snow. Okay. Do you know what a landfall is? Um, is it like a landslide? I guess so. Landfall was on three different websites, so I'm just trusting oh, it. Okay. I mean, I think, yeah, I'm probably like a landslide, I would imagine. Maybe it's just a different word for sure. the same I thing. I mean, it makes sense. Okay. I thought you said landfall. I like how I couldn't think of landslide, so I said avalanche without snow. <laughs> Which, like, I'm not entirely wrong, but I, I still hate myself. I, uh, no, you're not wrong at all. Um, it's like a waterfall without water. Yeah, you know. Just a fall. A cliff. It's <laughs> <laughs> a, a cliff moving on its own, but a not cliff an earthquake. not moving at all because there's it's no It's just water. a natural disaster. What is wrong with you? Okay. So Harry Culp, he was out there. He um, was looking for quartz and he climbed over a ledge. Um, and when he got over this ledge, he felt like something was staring at him. Super. Turned around and saw a whole colony of Kushtaka running after him. Ugh. And so apparently it scared him enough that he wrote about it, but never showed it to anybody because he didn't want to look like he was losing his marbles. Mm -hmm. And so after he died, his daughter actually found it (gasps) and then I guess like published it. Love that. And so it has since been uh, coined like this like manuscript. It's been coined the strangest story ever told. (laughs) Okay. Which, like, if I were to write a biography or an autobiography, I would want it to be called that, too. I mean, it's kind of funny, though, because, like, his whole purpose of not sharing it is not to end up on all these blog, like, paranormal blogs. And now I'm talking about it. The time. And now, like, his name is all over them. It's so sad. So, uh, in, in, there's this is an excerpt from it. I couldn't call them anything but devils, as they were neither men nor monkeys, yet looked like both. They were entirely sexless, their bodies covered with long, coarse hair, except where the scabs and running sores had replaced them. Each one seemed to be reaching out for me and striving to be the first to get me. The air was full of cries, and the stench from their sores and bodies made me faint. I could feel their hot breath on my back. So they're pretty close, unless they can breathe really far. Um, You can smell them, too. Ugh. Their long claw-like fingers scraped my back. Oh. The smell from their steaming, stinking bodies. Okay, this guy's getting too into that. You're really a little shamey here. Was making me sick. Ugh, he's definitely not body positive. Um, while the noise... <laughs> about their sores. <laughs> about their sores. Some people have sores. Um, while the noise they made, yelling, screaming, and breathing drove me mad. 
reason left me how i reached the canoe or how i hung on to that piece of quartz is a mystery to me i think he's like i still got the stone though like this is indiana jones or something <laughs> i hope he like wrapped it up in that story like, yeah <laughs> and here is the stone. forever so uh so that's just an excerpt from apparently the strangest story ever told that's pretty strange so kushtaka fun fact are vulnerable against copper in case you ever run into one you're like how do i say it myself have some copper on hand okay um sometimes they are afraid of fire uh no one knows why but apparently they're also uh repelled by urine so pee on them i guess okay i'm not gonna judge you i mean if you're scared enough when they get come by and you pee anyway maybe it'll save your life i know i know what to do you know the (laughs) do you okay let's hear it you know those moscow mules yes and they come in those little copper cups oh pee in it pee pee and then throw it just go pee pee <laughs> one two three pee pee yeah and then copper in your face yeah. i Co- like it copper pee in your face okay so i wonder if pee has copper in it also maybe like throw some fire in there like a some, some matches fire in there oh, i don't know into- <laughs> i don't know i'm trying to think of how to combine all of it yeah, light, it on, light fire. it on fire there we go does pee is pee flammable no because okay. it's pretty much water like gasoline <laughs> Well, in, unless you're like really not hydrated. Well, maybe. at Thanksgiving we were drinking. We weren't drinking pee. We were. Just, hold on. <laughs> you rewind. If you're drinking enough alcohol and it's in your system, could That's you light your pee on fire? Sure. Someone try that. No. <laughs> Don't try that. On I our... mean, try like in a safe space, but try it. No, you're. Okay. I just want to. I'm know. not going to do science now. This is not what this show is. But um, we had this thing called a. Um, oh God, what's it called? I think like a Feuerzangenbowle. You know and um sure yeah you basically it's this german thing that we it, did yes it is a german thing <laughs> that i gathered surprise and you put like wine in it and then you put uh, like orange slices and lemon slices and then you have this thing called a tsukahut which is a sugar hat and it's this giant cone of sugar and you put kind of like on a spit on top and then you pour rum on it all over it, and then you light it on fire and so then all the sugar melts into the wine underneath if I were an alcohol drinker, yeah. I, that sounds fun. It's kind of like making like a, it's a very Christmassy drink because it has like, you know, yeah. sp- uh, orange and. I hear you. And then you have like a, a fire underneath it because it's like war- a warm drink and it's like a cider, but it's wine and rum. Well, and if sugar. you peed on that and then put it in a copper mug, Why I think don't you we just found bring the a perfect. sugar hat and then pee on the sugar hat and set it on fire. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, no, the Did rum. Did you figure it out? The rum is what's on fire. What if. How about we just go back to the classics, get some gasoline, light it on fire, and then pee on that? And it's or pee, that. pee gas. Why don't you just bring a bottle of rum? You could use it anyway. Or a bottle if, of pee. But the rum you could use if you didn't find one of these things. That's true. That it has multiple needs. The rum could come in handy. The pee, not so much. You, first of all, offended. I've never seen a big sugar cone. I just discovered it. I've never heard about it. And I posted it. And all these people DM me, oh, a Feuerzeug in Bulle. And I was like, what the F? How, how do, do you guys know this? people speak German? Um... I would like one one day. Just the cone. I just want to like lick it like it's a lollipop. My mom doesn't listen to this, so I'm going to tell you I bought my mom one a whole set for Christmas, so Ooh. I'll show you. I bought three sugar hats. I'll take one home. I love a good sugar hat. Yeah. Can I wear it? Or it just looks like a cone, like it's a hat? It's just like this. It's like a cone. It really, you could wear it's anything if you try sugar, hard though. enough. Yeah. I could wear Geo just if I was strong it. enough to put them on my head. Tape it. Speaking of Geo, the main way to prevent kushtaka from coming near you is they are terrified of dogs oh well hello okay forget all the other things i just said just bring a dog and some rum and you're fine what about a dog pee that's two things right there there's a lot of options now okay yeah okay as long as somebody somebody has urine in them yeah that's the real key here (laughs) so okay kushtaka are terrified of dogs any if you have a dog and they are uh, one of those dogs who are a little too chatty and they're often barkers. Mm. This is where they come in handy. Never because heard of one. If you have a dog that barks a lot, Kushtaka is less likely to come find you because they're so scared of dogs. Well, good thing I have three. <laughs> so you finally have a use for your dog's uh, voice when it's unnecessary, not necessarily wanted. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is where, and this is dogs that have died natural deaths. Nobody's doing any sacrifices or anything, but... Apparently, these tribes have also sworn by having dog bones and using them as weapons against Kushtaka. So if there's a dog who died of a natural death, if you use their bones and turn them into, like, knives or something. So even their bones are 
repellent. Yeah, like innately dog. Like wow, they I wonder just why don't that like is. canines. That's random. Um, so the best way, if you are in a pinch and need to kill a Kushtaka, and not really in a pinch, if you have everything at your disposal. But also if you're about to ki- if you're like in a position where Kushtaka needs to be killed, like you're in a pinch. Like, right. there's, <laughs> you're definitely in like a moral, emotional pinch. You're actually like in a vice grip of, of <laughs> terror or something. So they are best killed if you pierce their heart. Obviously, I think most things act that way. Yeah. Or decapitated. Again, uh-huh. it's not too uncommon. It's effective. Um, but it's best done if you pierce their heart or decapitate them with a dog bone. Well, okay. Well, now you're getting... in copper. Oh, okay. The copper part, maybe you can make pretty sharp. So there, there you go. Um, and then burn the body to prevent them from regenerating into more Kashtaka. Oh, sure. Cause you oh, still, you they can... regenerate like a worm. Like you cut their head off. I imagine it's like reincarnating, but instead of reincarnating it, like your soul into sure. another form, you're just becoming another, like you just morph back into another Kushtaka. Oh God. Okay. So, cause essentially if the belief is that your soul is trapped in Kushtaka, then if you, if your soul reincarnates anyway, you would just be stuck in that space. Right. But you can reincarnate into other things. Yeah. I don't know how Kushtaka science and genetics work. <laughs> Like soul genetics, you know. Uh, uh, comment below if you have any don't understand. comment below. Don't comment, I already please. know everything I oh. said is the dumbest thing you've ever heard. Oh you don't God. need to tell me again. So uh, they're often confused with Bigfoot um, because they do look a lot like <laughs> yeah. Bigfoot. Um, a lot of people have defended this and been like, "No, they're not Bigfoot. They're just a, a baby Sasquatch with mange." And I'm like, "That's your best. It could also be like an animal we've all seen, right?" But apparently, the argument is, "No, no, no. It's definitely a Sasquatch with mange." Um, Gosh, or okay, or it could just be oversized otters, right? Well, uh, the otter thing gets me thinking because I'm like, if they're shape shifting into otters, I'm like, okay, it probably has something to do with actual otters, right? I'm thinking like <laughs> if you're well, also Alaska. So fun right. fact, Alaska has almost thirty thousand otters. I love otters. By so the way. it's like. Uh, it's probably an otter. You know, you, you see <laughs> yeah. them everywhere. Like odd. Speaking of odds. Yeah, it's probably an otter. Otters. Odds are. If you were an otter, you'd be an otter. You'd be a pretty odd otter. I tried, by the way, to join the odd fellows recently. Does when you say try, do you mean you failed? Uh, no, that means that they're the closest lodge is an hour and a half away. I see. So, but I wanted to join. So speaking of odd things. That's pretty odd. If they get it, if they get a, a chapter out well, here, then you I'll join. join. You just go to meetings and eventually the like... Did you go to the meeting? No, because the lodge is too far away. Oh, but like how did you try to join it? I tried to join by looking for a lodge oh, to oh, go to oh, meetings. I thought you like submitted an application or something. No, no, no. I mean, oh. I, so I'm part of an elk lodge out here. Oh, did you God. know that? Yes. <laughs> I loved it. I have, okay. Yeah. What? It's, it's super good. Nothing. You don't like them? I just have a lot. No, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it another day. Let's put it this way. I did it when I didn't have any friends and I was like, well, I want I want a reason to like go out and like have like a community and like meet up with a, like a group of people. And they really liked me because I was like 40 years younger than everyone. So sure, I yeah. was very popular there. Um, but yeah, I'm part of an elk lodge. And then I just never went as much as I thought I was going to and not not to knock them or anything. But I just, you know, they're all like retired and the activities aren't as wild as I would like them to be. And I thought, well, the odd fellow sounds fun. It's probably, probably the exact sound, same scenario. It does sound but... fun. I will say that. Anyway. Uh, so are women allowed to join? Am I allowed yeah. to join? Oh, okay. So I think a while ago, uh, a lot of those organizations like the Moose Lodge, I actually wanted to join a Moose Lodge and their lodge was too far away, which is why I joined the Elks. Okay. So I just totally broke my allegiance to them to go join the Elks. Um, but I think they all used to be, you have to be male to join, but yes. then the world's changing and they were like, well... We... The world's changing somewhat, but the ones that I have encountered mm-hmm. are not the most worldly, open-minded people. Let's just put it that way. Gotcha. I've been a part, so I've been a part of uh, the Elk Lodge out here, but I also knew people in Virginia that were part of Moose Lodges, and they were a goddamn blast. So huh. I think I just lucked out with the people in my charter. Yeah. I don't know. I, my, a couple of my uncles have been involved and um, I remember they literally had nights where the women would have to cook and bring in the food, but they had to go oh. to a separate room. It was like, no, that so was bad. not, that was not how that worked for. Okay. It was, really we had bad. very different experiences. I think it's a lot like fraternities and sororities where a lot sure. of people are anti Greek life, but if you had a great Greek life, then you're like, why do you hate it so much? I think it's kind of like that. I mean, lodges are literally just adult fraternities. Sure. Yeah. I'm not super into that. Maybe that's why I'm, uh, yeah. Cause I love Greek life. Yeah. I mean, I don't different like, lives. We led dislike it. I just, uh, 
You just don't love it like I do. I just don't. I didn't even know what it was until I went to college. And I was like, what the hell is going on? Why does everyone have glitter all over them? <laughs> I definitely didn't. I'll tell you that. Uh, so where are we anymore? I don't Sasquatch know. with mange, otters, odd fellows. That's how we got there. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Everyone is gone. Okay. So <laughs> so the reason I found out that otters have 30, or that Alaska has 30,000 otters to begin with, and that's why people would even why people should assume that it's probably otters that they're looking at right is because one of the websites that i looked at about the land otter man is i guess some sort of uh biology website or science like natural habitat website and so they were talking about this legend this legendary otter man and then they they clearly were like well while we've got these readers here let's throw in some actual facts about otters they like took advantage of it to to be like fungicational sorry so while I was learning about the otter man, you keep scrolling and eventually they have like fast <laughs> facts, facts about otters. <laughs> so here are a few of those. They are be- otters are believed to be one of the most intelligent non-human species on the planet. Because <laughs> humans are the most intelligent, obviously. Did you hear everything we just said for the last half an hour? None of it was intelligent. <laughs> We've actually just reverted that fact back and, to... An otter would have literally swam away because they're smarter than us. No, an otter would have taken over and done the podcast better. <laughs> Uh, apparently there's evidence that otters have been around for over 30 million years. Whoa. Didn't know that. Me neither. Apparently every continent except Australia and Antarctica and Antarctica have an otter population somewhere. Uh Uh-huh. Suck it. And if the legendary Kushtaka is any indication, this was the last fun fact on what has now become an educational, uh, excerpt here. The last one. If the legendary Kushtaka is any indication, they will steal your soul. Oh, (laughs) it's like, when the otters will. Yeah, it, like if like apparently they are might be related to Kushtaka and they'll I steal mean, your soul. They'll steal my heart. It went from like a legend folklore story to educational facts to like a real roller coaster. To like we're gonna rip back, <laughs> rip it back, and try and force them together. Again. I don't know what this website was, but I liked the ride it took me on. Yeah, it sounds fun. So allegedly, why why would otters? If this folklore, like how were otters inspired to become a cryptid? In what way was my next question? So I looked that up. And allegedly, otters have been uh, chosen among other animals to be inspired by the Kushtaka folklore or to have created Kushtaka folklore because at the time, um, otters were apparently uh, the one of the most human-like animals in the area. So back huh. when this when this folklore was created, they were the animal that had the most human-like behaviors. Well, they hold hands. If you've ever seen a video of otters holding hands like it's precious you, you they can't be evil look at that Watch fun that fact video. in san diego they have uh you can reserve tickets and go into like a pool and then they like release a bucket of otters to come swim a and cuddle with you <laughs> literally just like dump them in like here's an otter package for you um okay <laughs> it looks really fun i kind of want to go swimming with the otters um so at the time, they just seemed like the most human-like animal, and so it made the folklore easy to believe that Kushtaka could be people trapped in otter bodies since they're acting so much like humans. Okay. Um, they're be- So some ways that they're like humans, they're intelligent, friendly, social. They like to pull pranks on their friends, and with that many similar traits to us, and they like to hold hands, things like that, it was very easy to anthropomorphize their behavior. Sure. So if you're... In a community that believes in spiritual magic and they already act like humans, it's not that far of a stretch to believe that they might actually have been humans in a past life or Aww. are human adjacent. So that could be where the inspiration came from. Um, but another way that they're like humans is that they can be cute or playful to be manipulative and get something from you. Oh, that's funny. Um, which means that oftentimes otters actually shouldn't be trusted at all because if they're doing anything sweet, it's with an intention. So that's where like what so william burroughs says well speaking of cute things at all i just like this and i feel like william cute billy billy bros no i don't know but i thought this was like this probably should be like a tweet somewhere in the world a creature who knows he's cute soon isn't i was like that (gasps) sounds like a burn for an ex-boyfriend or something but so that's my next like pin board you know those like little felt boards with all the letters (laughs) yes so uh i will explain that in a second but one of the other ideas for why otters would be an inspiration for the kushtaka folklore is because they are really wonderful in a lot of human-like ways and they're also not so great in a lot of human-like ways so they uh just like kushtaka who will draw you in until they can prey on you um it's just another way that 
you know, otters also apparently do that in the natural world. And Richard Martin, this guy is clearly like anti otter in every way because there's a book out there um, called like the dark side of otters. Oh, come on. Rich. And this is a quote from Ricky. Get, come on. From Ricky Martin. Uh, Ricky Martin. Richard Martin. Oh, his name's literally Ricky Martin. Okay, yeah. got it. Uh, this is a quote that I ha- kind of has nothing to do with the story, but I needed to put it in the second I read it because I'm never going to see the sentence again. <laughs> Otters exhibit no self-control, no family values, and practice lots of kinky sex. Oh, God forbid. I know. First of all, that sounds like sounds a little slut shamey. Yeah, I, a million percent. To be fair, though, that immediately made me go look up like why, like what the hell the are sex practices? I mean, what are otter sex kinks? And I did find out that. Oh, my God. This is the best episode we've ever done. Keep so going. here's a lot about otter sex. Um, I will say I was team otter because of the hand holding thing. I think everyone's been suckered into thinking Shoot, otters well, are adorable. I have some fun fact about otters, too, that you haven't said. And now you're, are you going to make me f- regret them? Yeah. Can I say them real quick? Yeah. While well, we still love otters. Oh, I don't want to no, know. No, I want to know. I want to know. Okay, I went to the um, Long Beach Aquarium, and they have a whole thing of otters, and they had this, like, board, and I took a photo because I was like, that's me. Because it was like, um, otters like some, like, 20% of social uh, interaction, and then they need 80% of, like, alone time to make up for it. <laughs> I was like, okay. They're very introverted, and they get tired of other otters very quickly and need to, like, rest and, like... So very human-like. Which recover, is, yeah. I mean, it, it falls into this, it was like... so funny. It's believable that maybe they were humans in like, a past they life. They pull pranks on people, or they pull pranks on other otters, yada, yada, and then they're very introverted. I was like... I, I'm that. Right. So that totally validates this whole, like, why tribes oh God, what's, compare what are you about them to say. So apparently it is very regular for otters to not only be fond of necrophilia oh. with other otters and other animals wow. their size, but also a lot of forced sex. Okay. I was worried that's where you're going. Dolphins do that too. Yeah. Well, apparently otters are known to be so forceful and like, biting and holding <gasps> people underwater not people holding otters oh other God. otters underwater um so a lot that's where necrophilia comes in because <gasps> usually okay all right you know Woof. the animals they usually kill animals not usually but there have been enough reported times where like there are many articles about this um someone who works at an aquarium is writing a very angry I'm sure, email yeah, right now i'm totally butchering it so i'm gonna try to be as like like pc as possible there are have been enough instances where there are many articles online suggesting that it is very common for otters to forcibly have sex with their female counterparts um and to a point where many of them have either been savagely attacked or died it's very bad it's really bad what i'm gonna switch and things by the up. way that's not kinky sex that is not what that word means exactly so th- this richard guy's got you another need to thing figure coming. out your vocabulary ricky martin if this was all consensual then like they can have as much kinky sex as right. they fucking want and that's what kinky sex is not yeah like, okay. consent not is sexy guys okay so i'm gonna switch things up real quick because i talked about something dark and well, let's make it happy again and we can For all like two seconds before i start talking let's laugh at my expense okay. because in order to look this up i typed in otter kinky sex oh no and I forgot in that moment that otter is a gay term. Oh, sure. And so I ended up getting a lot of gay porn on my computer last night. So <laughs> there's that. Oh, boy. What a night. Um, but so anthropologist Richard ba- Barazul, Barazul uh, has said that land otters might have also been the inspiration for this uh for this folklore because land otters at the time were a symbolic bridge uniting humans and animals Wow! because it was a land otter that could be both on land and sea. And so it was just a way for it was like represented unity in a way. So they probably had Kushtaka be like, Oh, it's part, part land animal, part water animal. And then it kind of got morphed into this dark creature. Wow. Um, and so a couple fun facts. There is an episode on Destination America's Alaska Monsters uh, about the Otter Man. Um, very funny because it was very funny and very laughable. And they decided at the end that they could not find the spirit because it's just an elemental spirit. Like, it's uh, not a real creature. It's just with, with the world. Um, okay. It's also the main antagonist in the book The Beast of Barcroft. And in TMZ... Uh, TMZ did a report in 2013 that Charlie Sheen actually went to Alaska on a private jet to try to find Kushtaka himself. And when what? this was, I think, during the tiger blood phase. Oh, sure. Yeah, that. So um, 
He apparently just went on a little private jet and went to go look for Kushtaka. That's, didn't didn't find anything, fun fact. And uh, Or did he? Well, he didn't because his, <laughs> he was quoted later saying, it obviously knew our group was too far skilled to be snowed in this fashion, so it stayed hidden like a sissy. He said that? Fighting words to the Kushtaka. Char- Charles. 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 Are you listening? Billy, Ricky, and Charles. Are you listening, Chuck? Anyway, that is the... Um, story of the kushtaka that is our otter sex lesson for the day there's your otter um, sex lesson. also i'm like really sorry if we ruined like your favorite animal just now because if you like i know a lot of people otters are, i like, loved otters i did too and um i really was like oh i can i relate to them now i'm like i don't know yeah uh, that's, it's just a very dark side to but it was also very that. sad the day that i learned that dolphins um right i used to love dolphins assault too and it's like oh i mean guess what humans do it too so it's like you know what i yeah. mean i guess it's just animal kingdom people are fucking terrible sometimes dolphins are terrible yeah that's my hot take for the hot take (laughs) most most creatures suck in some way at least in in one aspect except for geo except for the only thing that sucks about geo is that he's a scorpio but Mm. well we make do with it we make do um yes i uh also elephants also i don't think i have a, a bad fact about elephants please don't give me one don't that is not an invitation to give me a bad fact i I, I Christine loves elephants like really a lot and I, I donate a lot of money to elephant sanctuaries please don't ruin elephants for me I would be very very tragically upset um anyway shall we move on to this nonsense sure what have <sighs> you got boy oh boy um is it bad yeah okay yeah great yeah it's rough happy holidays everyone I know I was gonna do a Christmas one well so the next one I was going to have a whole holiday theme for the month of December, but then, I mean, I'll explain it in the next, in next week's actual, like, week of Christmas episode, um, what I ended up doing, but some of them with the Christmas ones, I was like, I it's don't, even sadder. I don't want to ruin, like, I don't want to do that. Um, yeah. Maybe we should, no, never mind. <laughs> what? <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't. What if we just did, like, animal sex fun I was going to say, what if we did the most fucked up ones for the holidays and we called it Helidays? Helidays. TM, 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 TM. Helidays. That's us. We no, it sounds it. like Hollandaise or Hellman's Maybe mayonnaise. Maybe we could eat Hollandaise while or we Hellman's do it. Or Hellman's mayonnaise. Never mind. Okay. Okay. Change it. <laughs> Flip um, it and reverse it. Okay. <laughs> not going to continue. Um, yeah. So I there were some like really brutal like. I'm doing a, I'm doing a Christmas one next week. Let's just put it that way. But that's. Here Let, we go. Let's just go. Let's just go. So I did um, M's cool thing and I put out a to the close friends on instagram i had a topic request for holiday themed topics um so next week i'm gonna read some of my favorite responses because some of you are weird and wrote me like some weird answers and they that would be fun they made me laugh so i'll read just an episode where we just read things people say to us stupid and it was really funny so you guys made me laugh thank you um so i'll read those next week but uh one of the messages i got was from rach todd 21 and they said uh, first they said the murder of Shannon Siders is wild. Netflix cold case files, season one, episode seven, great episode on it. Then immediately after there was a second message that said, oops, just realized you were looking for holiday themed. <laughs> Shannon Siders is still worth a eyeball emojis. So I guess. a look. Okay. So I was like, you know what? Actually, Rage Todd, you kind of read my mind because I wanted to like do a non holiday one before next week's episode. So thank you for that suggestion. And I love cold case files on Netflix. So I watched the episode and I have made a little presentation for all of you. Great. This is the story of the murder of Shannon Siders. Um, oh, and I know a lot of people are upset. We're not going to Michigan on this tour. Um, so this is a Michigan story Yay! for you. We did Salt Lake last week. That's true. Got to do some Florida. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll have to do, maybe I'll get the flu again. The Florida. Yep. Um, so this is a Michigan story. Um, the sources I used was a cold case files episode, uh, Michigan live, the Cincinnati Enquirer, WZZM 13 grand rapids justice for native women.com and the Detroit free press. So let's go. Ah, okay. This takes place on July 17th, 1989. Shannon Siders is an 18 year old young woman living in New Wago, Michigan. She was raised by her father after he and her mother had gotten divorced and he got custody of her when she was four years old and raised her uh, Mm. as a single dad. So Robert, her dad, is uh, he works the night shift at Pepsi Cola, which is near the factory, which is nearby. And his shift would start at midnight and then he would get out at 830 in the morning. 
So July 17th, typical work day, he heads to work and leaves Shannon at home. When he gets off work the next morning and arrives home, Shannon is gone. Hmm. Um, at first, he's like, okay, it's strange. It's like, you know, 830 in the morning. I don't know where she would be. Uh, but so he goes to some of the neighbor's houses. He goes to some of her friend's houses. Uh, she's not there. She, he even walks through the neighborhood, like calling for her. Maybe she's walking around the neighborhood mm. and it's a really small town. So, you know, in a, in a few minutes he realizes she's like not anywhere. So Yikes, I hate it. It's bad. So he goes to the police office, police. I do this every time. It's like when my mom mixes up the gas station and the yeah, grocery store. Yeah. I think it's cause I want to say post office and I say police office. Do you say post station. I don't. <laughs> oh, well, that doesn't work, I guess. <laughs> I mean, because we do so many stamps.com ads that I think I just say post office so much. Right, right, right. Police. Thankfully, I don't say police station a lot. I mean, I guess I do. <laughs> you kind of do, though. I that do. Is your I job. do. You're right. You're right. I probably say more. Okay, forget it. Um, so he goes to the police station and he begins to print off flyers and hang them up all over town. He reports her missing. Um, it's, it's, yeah, he's trying his best to get everybody involved in the search for Shannon. So at the police station, there's this young girl. Her name is Amy Bonner. She's 15 years old, and she works at the sheriff's department um, as a police receptionist. Mm. When she's doing, like, basically a summer job, which is kind of a cool summer job at the police station. Wow. I think so. I thought so. I would think so. Um, so one day she is working, uh, her fo- her working the desk. She's answering phone calls, and she answers a call from a very excited she said his voice was very excited. It was this man. And he practically yells at her into the phone, I just killed Shannon Siders. <gasps> and yep. said it happy excited. Like, just, yeah. Oh. Um, no. Yep. Bad. So, and she's, like, interning there, basically. She's 15, yeah. Can you imagine getting Traumatizing. that Traumatizing. Again, another shout out to dispatch people. Because, like, I don't know how you do it. I don't either. I truly. It, it would be very, very hard on me. I don't think I could do it. Um, so she obviously tells uh, her boss and they so the guy hangs up they, she tells her boss they look into the lead they try following him but they can't figure out nothing comes of it but it's jarring because up until this point they knew shannon was missing but they didn't know she had been murdered and now it seemed like that could very well be a possibility mm. so a few months later over labor day weekend two guys are walking in the manistee national forest off the beaten path don't do that by the way no uh so i think we all know what's about to happen mm-hmm they made some s'mores and had a great night. No, I'm just the end. <laughs> I wish. The end. I, w- I wish I could. And re- that's why we drink. <laughs> I wish we could rewrite all of these. We should do that. We should have like a. Well, I don't know if that's. That that's seems ex- a little. I don't know. It sounded. It sounded fun for a second, and then I like it reality sunk in. It sounded fun if it actually works. Like if we could actually fix right. things, but I think that would like just a choose be... your own adventure. But like it's all good. But like let's re steer history into positive. Right. Yeah, I mean, it sounded fun and for thirty seconds, and then I was like, oh no, that's fucked up. Yeah, that seems to be a lot of our lives. Yeah. These okay. Days anyway, in, in this career, please entertain me with this, this. horribleness. So these two guys are out Labor Day weekend, walking through the Manistee National Forest off the beaten path, and they stumble upon two ID cards. Uh, Great. One is a video rental card, and one is a gas card, and the names on both of the cards say Shannon Siders. No. So they call police. Police come over to where the IDs were found. They find a pair of blue jeans, and they are Shannon's blue jeans. <sighs> Not a good sign. I hate that. Yep. Um, this area was actually called the Hole in the Woods, which, no, don't go I up. think if a part of the woods has a name, it's because enough things have happened there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good or bad. Exactly. Yeah. Usually bad. Yeah, the, the woods as a whole is enough like, yeah, yeah. to avoid, but the Hole in the Woods seems like the place... It's like when, if anyone were, no one has, thank God, but if anyone were to ever be like, oh, let's go climb like Devil's Canyon. I'm like, why is it called that? I don't want to, like, like, I wouldn't hike if you, if it was called like Happy Fun Place. Right, 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 I'm right. Definitely not going there now. Candy Cane Mountain. Right. Um, Big Rock Candy Mountain. That's the one I would hike for sure. <laughs> if any of them. Absolutely. You would hike it? Really? Yes. Okay. Because I could stop every five seconds and eat candy. That's true. I would take. I would take like. And a- the little streams of alcohol come trickling down the rock, so sure. you would have well, a blast fine, at the bottom. If you, if you put it that way, you wouldn't even have to hike. I would actually take a chairlift, <laughs> and then I would sit. just like you would just hold the wine glass <laughs> yes. while like while yes. it fills itself up. Except I've fallen off chairlifts twice, so maybe well, not. How- and a rock what? candy mountain. I- I had a lot of skiing accidents when I was younger because I'm not very sporty, and my stepmom insisted on making us go skiing every winter. It was bad. I had, my mom uh, tried to warn her. My mom's like, she does not have American jeans. She has very 
German like stout jeans. I do love I do love going skiing, but there I have had some gnarly falls where I was like, oh boy, I don't know if I'm gonna come back. Yeah, from this I one. mean, there was one year my brother fractured his vertebrae, vertebra, vertebra, on the mountain. There was one year I literally fell off the chairlift. It, it was like really bad shit. I'm I've just, never had anything I, to this day, like knock on wood, but like somehow I've never broken a bone, and like I'm the clumsiest person on earth, so I don't know how that's hasn't happened. I'm literally so lame though. I got like stressed, but I get really like I get hurt and really fucked up ways to make up for it. Where right. I'm like, oh, I didn't break my arm, but like now I just can't move for five days. I've broken my ankle, but they're like, yeah. And then I, I, this is terrible. I've like fractured my back several times, but like stress fractures from <sighs> like heavy backpacks and shit. Like nothing, no like actual skateboarding fall. Like just... the last time I hurt my back was really bad. Like it was the time when I with you. Oh yeah. Um, that was that I was... literally had to get a doctor's note so I didn't have to like do any intense work for like three weeks. And the doctor said really... I sprained my spine. I was like, Yeesh. I was like Ugh. and there would be mo- there would be times where like I'd just be sitting there and my spine would just like collapse. Like my, I would just feel my whole body just oh like, like fall down. You know how I feel about spines. <laughs> and I would tell, I told the doctor that I was like, it's literally, my back is not like, it's literally giving out. Like all of a sudden it's like, I don't have a spine. My whole body melts into gravity. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, that happens. And I was like, what do you mean that happens? I just have to continue living. I am not going to be responsible for you on this rock candy mountain. I don't, I don't want to be responsible. Especially when you're, you're not landing on like a puff of snow. You're landing on That's rock what I'm saying. candy. I'll be busy falling off the chairlift into a spike of candy. I'm really loving these tangents. This is what happens when we don't see each other for a while. I know it's problematic. Everybody hates it. I'm sure. But I'm we sure. do like, as we say, we, as if you listen to pod Lords, you'll learn that we were not friends before the podcast. And so we are, we constantly are like, what like learning things about each other that we had no idea yeah so fun facts fun facts um okay so let's get back to this horrible thing um they find a pair of blue jeans and the area was called uh the hole hole in hole in the woods hole in the woods and it was actually a well-known party spot for kids so that's where the teens would go you know the youths yes hashtag teens Mm -hmm. which is where i don't want to go not even anymore even when i was a teen i was i did not want to go i would have died to be invited no i'm too i'm too scared of those teens um in the cold case files episode they interviewed robert her father and he said he's older now obviously but he said he went out there when he was a teenager but at the time he didn't realize that like kids still went out there Mm. so when he heard this he was like oh my god like that's where i hung out when i was a teenager and now they found my daughter's like missing id cards and jeans in that spot so he didn't even know she, that's where she would hang out with her friends. It's wow. just very weird, like, layers of the story. Um, so at this point, Robert is obviously fearing the worst. He actually goes out into the woods on his own looking for Shannon, which is just makes me really sad. Um, you know, she's his only daughter. He's like, she's all that I had. So he went out yeah. to the woods looking. He said, he's just like, I feared the worst. Like, I just assumed I'd find a shallow grave or find her body or something. But um, in this part... <sighs> Oh, gosh. Okay. This is where I started to cry. Okay. He says in the episode that he he said, I do believe some people have some sort of connection or ESP or an ability to connect with those who have passed. But that day was a day I determined I don't have those abilities because she oh. because she didn't say, Dad, I'm over here. And I just like. <laughs> wow. And, you know, what's interesting about that is I'm so convinced that my well, first of all, my mom will never die. But when if she were to, I'm convinced that I will hear her or sense her. And the fact that like someone yeah. else felt that and then realized like that's such a helpless. It is. It's terrible. Powerless I mean, he feeling. said like they were just they had each other. And he was like the fact that I just never he's like, I you know, he thought he would know like he thought he would find her. Yeah. And he's like, I, it just the, nothing happened. And so that just broke my heart. And that's well, that's when I began crying. So ding, ding. Great. If we're keeping tally. Um, I, I guess so. I guess we are. So October 15th, 1989, um, three months after Shannon's disappearance, Robert uh, is at home with his girlfriend at the time, and he receives a phone call. So it was a call from a woman named Wendy who worked at a local bar that Robert and his girlfriend, Linda, frequented. So Robert's girlfriend, ans- Linda, answers the phone and hands the phone to Robert, and he picks up and hears Wendy on the other line say, Bob, they found a body up here. They think it's Shannon. So he said that's when everything just collapsed. Um, 
A hunter walking through the Manistee National Forest near where her belongings had been found a month earlier had stumbled upon her body. And police actually told Robert that if he had gone a few yards further, like if he had gone a little bit further on his search, he would have found her body. Mm. So he was looking right in that area, but he... So close. Hadn't gone into the wood line far enough. Um, Yeah. And so maybe for the best he didn't. I don't know. Um, But so Shannon's body was found. It was almost three months from the day she had been reported missing. Her injuries were examined thoroughly. She had been brutally beaten. Uh, The cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head. According to the Detroit Free Press, Shannon's skull was found detached from her body Mm. about 14 feet away. Uh, There was a pocket knife and a pair of table legs also found near the body. And it's un- table legs. Yeah, it's it's. So I was thinking about that because like this sounds so random, but also if this is a spot where kids like go party all the time and have for decades, like right, who knows what kind There's of. There's probably some shit. randoms. Yeah. Like we don't. We had a in Virginia. We had a quarry that we would go to, and there's always always random I, shit. Right? I only went a few times, but there was always something weird there. Yeah, as far as I saw. I mean, Selena and I used to wander around putting potatoes in people's mailboxes, so I'm sure there's claim to fame weird shit. Um. Yeah, so th- I didn't know if that was related or not, but that is what they found near her body. So uh, she had been found on her back uh, with her legs spread out, and it was believed she had been a victim of rape. Her shirt was pulled up, and her underwear had been pulled down around one leg. The bones of her hand, because she had decomposed at this point, were clutching a necklace. Mm. Uh, there was also some mutilation. Um, so just a warning. For the next 15 seconds. Uh, it appeared that the skin around her vagina had been cut. Uh, first, they weren't sure if it was like a torture thing or if it was someone trying to hide evidence after the fact. Okay. So they weren't clear on that. Um, but so that's what they found. Uh, when it came to funeral arrangements, Robert really had a hard time because he couldn't bring himself. Well, first, he couldn't bring himself to look at Shannon's body, especially after what had happened to her. And then he also struggled with picking pallbearers to carry the casket mm. because he felt that whoever had killed her knew her. Right. Whoever had killed her raped her and you – know, or whoever had killed and raped her knew her. Right, right. So how could he pick one of her friends, a pallbearer or like a family friend, knowing maybe one of these people <sighs> carrying my daughter's coffin? It's got to be such a terrifying thought when someone you love mm. is a victim of murder and like knowing that chances are statistically – yeah the person that person who did it is going to come to their funeral right right and like you're oh. just and you're just standing amongst strangers at this point because you're like i don't know who did it can't but trust anyone statistically someone here did yeah and um especially at a small town you know everyone gathered for right. the funeral and like ugh. okay so uh you know he instead so this is interesting um instead he didn't pick anyone from any men from her friend group or any boys instead he asked several of her cousins all women or girls to carry her casket so Aww um i just thought that was kind of right kind of nice uh shannon was very well loved the funeral was attended by many of her friends and classmates a couple of her friends had asked if they could write a letter to shannon and put it in the casket robert let them along with some other like remembrances of their times together in high school the original investigator said um oh what does this say i don't know (laughs) that's half the fun okay let's figure this out um the original was that where you fell asleep and your head just like <laughs> smacked the keyboard it might have been where junie was either that or junie junie was just involved falling asleep on your laptop <sighs> um da, 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 da. so they had asked so the oh i see the original uh investigative team had asked michigan state police behavioral analysis unit bau to build a profile on who may have killed shannon so this is interesting so they're building a psychological profile like right in criminal minds you know oh um, yeah so the profile, they believed she was ki- likely killed with, by somebody within her peer group um, who was her age. Uh, according to cold case detective Adam Mercer, who was interviewed in the episode as well, uh, he believed this person would have been in her, her age group and then the crime had possibly been committed by more than one person. There was also a good chance alcohol and drugs would have been a factor, and they believed this was most likely a sexually motivated homicide and that she was killed by someone she knew. Mm. So this was just, like, it struck the small town of Nuego to its core. Like, this was just horrific. Um, it was obviously shocking for an 18-year-old woman to, with no, like, enemy, no known en- enemies to be brutally assaulted and murdered. Um, 
especially by someone in the community and someone she knew and someone they knew. Mm -hmm. Um, And so there was like that classic small town fear of, do you really know your neighbors? Which by the way, you you don't, I don't care what you say. You don't, (laughs) (laughs) I don't believe you do anyway. Um, Unless you're like, bffs or unless you're like you and celine like right 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 right, unless you like grew up like intimately with each other really close but i just am like i don't i don't know also i'm not very i mean there's there's wherever there is a serial killer there's probably a neighbor that doesn't know they're a serial killer right i mean even if you think about someone is living next to a killer exactly it could be me i could be living next to a killer you could be sitting next to a killer (laughs) that is the truth um yeah like even with uh uh, Joe D'Angelo, uh, Golden State Killer. People were like, "Oh, he was just always out fixing his boat and would wave right. hello and like how you know." And I, you can't blame them. Like, how the hell would you know? Listen, if your neighbor is a pillar of the community, you need to just lock your doors. If you haven't heard our advice yet, then you're doing something wrong. Go call the police on them mm-hmm. and tell them we sent you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't please, God, say no. you heard it somewhere, but you forget where. You forget. You say you heard it on a really, really cool, awesome place, but you don't remember what it's called. Right, 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 right. Um. Say you heard it on last podcast and left. No, I'm just kidding. I was like, what's another podcast? I was like, what's another true crime show? Um, don't do that. Also, don't pin it on anyone. I'm so sorry, especially us. I'm just teasing. Okay, da 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 da. Especially us. Yes. Um. Anyway, back to this fucked up stuff. So Robert pointed out to investigators that Shannon had a class ring that was very important to her. It had her initials on it, and there was an inscription on it as well. And that was never found in the house, and it was not found on Shannon's body. Okay. So investigators began to think maybe this killer... It was killer... like a trophy. Exactly. So when Shannon's body had been found, a forensic entomologist had been hired. Do you know what that is? No. Entomology. Yeah. Skin? No bugs. That's dermatology. Skin is Dermatology. Bugs. I should have known that. I okay. I dated a biology major in college, and uh, she took this entomology class. Anyone that was a biology major at my school had to take this class, <laughs> where literally for an entire semester you had to carry around like a butterfly net, and you had to catch <laughs> different species of bugs. It's like that SpongeBob episode. Throughout, no, truly, like jellyfishing. Like we would go out to like dinner, and she'd be like, "Oh, there's like there's a." there's this bug let me go get it and would have to like pull the butterfly out like not just when you're at school like all the time carry this butterfly net around so you could get as many species of bugs as possible what'd you do with and them? then at the end of the year you had to like make dioramas <gasps> you of them. killed them oh i didn't no but she killed them i mean they ended up on oh, no, a board don't do that no I, I mean i don't know what to tell you it's already <sighs> happened it's still happening there but don't, don't do that but i i should have known entomology because i heard it all the time and anytime i saw someone on campus with a butterfly net i was like they're definitely a biology major anyway <laughs> keep going or they just really wanted to. or they really like butterflies i don't know um so they had this forensic entomologist who basically studies the bugs that on a decomposing body to figure out mm-hmm. time of death and that kind of thing so uh this guy analyzed the insects and larva what cycle they were in on her body to create a timeline over death um and forensic entomologists are not used very often but because shannon's body had been found out in the woods after so many months uh, they thought it would be a useful tool the entomologist was able to determine that it was somewhere in the last couple of weeks of july to the first week of august that shannon had been killed going back to the timeline police had to determine who shannon was with who was la- who with whom she last nope i don't know you know Okay, I don't. English is not my first language. Well, that I knew. They had to determine who she was with last before she died. I see. Turns out she had been with eight people before she died, and the last people to see her uh, were other, like, friends from high school, friends in her peer group. Um, So suddenly they had eight people they had to interrogate and figure out if they were involved. So all eight were interviewed at the police station. Some of them took polygraphs, and the idea was to try and rule them out one by one. By using Shannon's friend's answers, they were able to build a sort of picture of what had happened that night. So Robert had left the house about 1030 to go to work, and Shannon was still home at that point. He was on his way to the factory where he worked, and he le- uh, after he left, Shannon ended up meeting with a group of friends she knew. And they were local kids who liked to hang out at the hole in the woods. Yep. Uh, they'd all gone to high school together, just like a typical group of teenagers out partying in the woods. Uh, one of Shannon's closest friends at the time, Julia Lidditz, was 
interviewed in this episode as well and she described that's why i love the show because i find like the actual like family and who want to tell the story to get as true of a story as possible yeah and it's nice because sometimes you don't know if a show is like exploitative or just like yeah, drama drama you know and getting like a genuine yeah and like letting the, the victims tell the story rather than like right. just uh pulling the most interesting headlines and stuff like that mm. so i thought that was kind of cool but so um they interviewed one of her best friends at the time uh who said that what well, sorry i lost my spot julia uh she described the group of people she said she didn't consider them shannon's close friends uh they were kind of acquaintances from high school but not like best pals sure uh the group got together meeting in three separate cars and ended up in the infamous hole in the woods they hung out for a bit did a bit of driving as you do that one i did do a lot of in high school just driving 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 around that's what you do that's what you do what else is there to do? literally i don't know i remember and i think about it now in high school when i'm like what did i do with my friends because i have so many memories but most of them were just driving, driving. to each other's houses how driving to each other's houses or yeah. like driving to get a burger but like we didn't drive anywhere outside of like a 15 mile radius and yet i remember having yeah. a blast and it's like wow i, I don't <laughs> And that, and then that also was before I had an iPhone and everything, and right. like I, before I had social media it's not accounts. Like we were taking pictures. I'm like, like maybe was I just like having like old traditional fun? Like, like I guess we had mix CDs. Like we could be playing mix CDs. We used to make each other mix CDs, yeah. listen to them in the car, and then like go to the quarry for different drives. And then what would we do at the quarry? We would walk around in the grass and sit down, and then we would leave. Like, oh, oh I did that kind of thing, but I didn't go to like we had a park where people like smoke pot and did like coke oh people also did that at the quarry i just didn't do it we, oh, okay. we also had a we had two uh, different cliffs there that people would jump into the water so it was like a summer oh you mean a waterfall area. without water yeah <laughs> yeah it was like a tall rock that once maybe had water but there was no water. and it was not made of candy so m did not climb it or jump off of it we <laughs> Stupid, had a, don't jump off of we had a friend things. who literally bursts your drum jumping well, off also, of it also People die all the time from jumping off of high. Like, oh, it was a 60 foot cliff. No, especially if you're drinking. You don't know if there are rocks underneath. You hit the water wrong. He, don't he also do that. Versus eardrum and had like intense surgery on his foot. <sighs> I'm telling you, people kill, kill, kill themselves that way. Jumping. I mean, accidentally. It's really bad. Um, anyway, so they did some driving, which I also did. I, that was kind of what we did for fun, which I'm like, God, my poor mother was paying for gas all that time. I know. <laughs> No. like i definitely wasn't and then food once i drove some once i got somewhere oh yeah so many mcdonald's runs and then now i'm like oh god if she only knew and then i think i had put she one time one day figured out that i was going to the gas station like three times a week because i just drove around so much and she was like <laughs> you need a job stop i remember i just and maybe it's because we live in a city now where we're so far away from all of our friends like traffic is a real bitch yeah but like i just remember calling people and being like want to go grab a smoothie and then you would just go get a smoothie and then that was enough of a hangout that it was like it Completely. warranted another 10 minute drive home there wasn't like an act to, you didn't need to like now it's like if we're getting together it's because we have to do something not because like like i would i would rather text you and not be in traffic for an hour totally you know? or like facetime i mean we have that now but like yeah we'd be like oh do you want to sit in my basement for two hours and eat candy yeah <laughs> like that was exactly. the event <laughs> it would be like well that's worth a 15 minute drive but now if someone was like hey do you want to sit in traffic for an hour and 20 minutes to come sit here and do nothing and watch a next it's marathon like, no i don't at all actually if it were a next marathon i'd probably come over but Anyway, I keep distracting. I'm trying to no, make no, a, a bad thing more lighthearted. Good job. Thanks. You're, you're doing great. I'm trying. Um, so they so they did a bit of driving and eventually decided to go home. Um, she had been hanging out with these two guys named Levi Pearson and Brandon Sievers, and they did not have a great reputation in town. Julia said, let's just say she did not. Shannon did not like being alone with them, um, with Brandon Seaver. Sorry, mm. which is not a good sign. Uh, he didn't think highly of women or girls. He would often refer to them, to women and girls as sluts and whores. He tended to, tended to make women uncomfortable. I wonder why. Um, just very like touchy feel like very not aware of boundaries. Right. But they're or sluts. aware of they're... aware of boundaries. Just didn't care about boundaries. Right. 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 But he's still like but, and also making passes at them while also disrespecting. Oh, them. sure. Got and it. the second they turn the, turn him down, they're the slut. Then they're a, oh, you're a slut or a bitch or a prude. That's or a bitch. Just how it works. Um. Anyway, so there was also a tip that Brandon had left town shortly after Shannon went missing. So they're like, huh? Well, that's fishy. Brandon was brought in, and according to his interview, Shannon had been right. Uh, Shannon had been riding around with him in the car and decided she wanted to go home. Mm. The opportunity came up for her to get in the car for someone else, and she did because she was uncomfortable. I guess Brandon said he didn't see her after that. When asked why he left town, Brandon explained he had gone to Colorado to pick up a cousin and came back. And he actually did come back right away. Like he didn't 
run away or anything. Gotcha. Um, the other kids did confirm his story, saying they had witnessed Shannon getting out of his car and into another car. So at this point, um, police were like, okay, well, we can't really pin anything on you. Um, the car that she had gotten into was the car of Paul and Matt Jones. They were brothers who grew up south of Nuego. And the original plan was that they um, would go back to Shannon's house to watch some movies and drink some beer. But the group split up with Shannon um, and Paul and Matt's car in Matt's car. No, Shannon in Paul and Matt's car. I hear you. I hear you. They allegedly dropped her off at home after that. They told police they dropped her off between midnight and 2 a.m. And that was that because she was tired and didn't want to hang out and drink any more beer. Uh, they even went into detail about the house. They said her porch light was on. The TV was on. They saw the dog kind of running inside the window looking out. So investigators tested out these stories. Um, it seemed to check out. You could actually, when they did kind of a test run, you could see the TV from where they said they'd parked. You could see the dog running around. The porch light was always on. Okay. So it kind of matched. So they were like, all right. I mean, it looks like you did drop her off at Shannon's ha at her house. Sure. Um, they also passed the polygraph test. Um, so everybody at this point is kind of being checked off the list. Uh, although all eight of the gr group had been thoroughly investigated, nothing came of it. And, um, it, you know, we're watching an episode or I was watching an episode of Cold Case Files. So you kind of know that it's going to go cold and the right. leads are going to dry up. So this is kind of a fun fact. Um, excuse me. This is kind of a fun fact from the opening of the show, which like gets me every time. So. Jeez, sorry. Um, there are, here's a fun fact. There are 120,000 unsolved murder cases in America, and only 1% are ever solved. Wow. And so these episodes are stories of those cases that are solved. So it's like really, the odds are just, once a case goes cold, the odds are... Just zilch. Zilch, yeah. So Shannon's grandmother um, is still alive. She was interviewed in the episode as well. She says not a day goes by that she doesn't think about Shannon and wonders how old her children would be, whether she'd mm. be a grandmother by now and she would be a great-grandmother. Um, it became, as Robert put it, a hole in their heart. And she was an only child. Uh, she was basically just taken fully away from them. Wow. And from the way it looked, they'd never find out who did it, which is just the worst part. And the killer was walking free, presumably. Wow. So Robert tried to keep the, the case, like alive even though it was going cold um he put up signs billboards they all said who killed shannon siders um he tried to keep her in people's memories try to find answers but again over time just nothing came of it yeah just, things just slowed down no more leads now we fast forward to august 2011 it's been more than 22 years since shannon's murder wow uh, Nuego got a new police chief in 2000. His name is Pat Headland, and part of the reason he took the job in Nuego was he wanted to solve the Shannon Siders case. Oh, wow. Which I thought was really interesting. Yeah. Um, the district had also gotten a new administration set up, and they decided to put to set up a cold case task force, which is just like, I just always think that's so badass to like go back force. and find like who did these things that they think they got away with it, but we're going to figure it out. Like really coming at you <clears throat> hot this time. Or cold. Oh. Ooh. So they brought on Detective Mike Stevens, who also said finding those responsible for Shannon's murder was the reason he became a police officer, which is really interesting. Such a small town. I mean, small area. If you hear about this growing up and you're like, that inspired me to become a police officer. So that was really interesting. Mm. Um, this task force first order of business task forces first order of business was analyzing Shannon herself using victimology interviews interviewing close friends, family, and so on to figure out, like, who she was, what her lifestyle was like, her behaviors, that kind of thing. The first thing they learned was that Shannon was known to always wear her class ring on her right hand at all times. And Got like it. I mentioned, the key had, or the key, the ring had not been found anywhere, not in her body, not in her house, and this became a key point in the investigation. Got it. Uh, so the first order of business, uh, according to Detective Headland, was to make sure it wasn't just laying where the body was found and they didn't find it. He was like, maybe it was there. Nobody saw it. So this is where I got excited because <laughs> I don't know if you know this about me. This is another fun fact that I don't think I've shared with you. What? Um, I am a metal detector hobbyist. Yeah, I knew this. You did? Um. I don't think I know the extent, but what, I have brought up metal detectors to you before, and then you really, really it's, got off on a like tangent. It's like a really weird thing that I like don't talk about. I don't know why. I think I just get really overwhelmed. Um, but do you actively metal detect? I did for a long time, and I have three metal detectors. You still do here? No, I don't have them here. They're in oh, it's gonna be like homie. Let's no. go. Oh god, I, I should bring them here. They're very hard to transport, though. How big are they? Like, are they like? They're like the size of these microphones. 
But are they like they're not intense, like expensive yes. versions? Yes. Yes. I bought a very expensive version in high school. <laughs> like that was me in high school. I was such a dork. Well, no, I had one, but I had like the Sky Mall meant for kids one and I knew it was not good. So I got one of those as a kid and then I was like, oh, I'm obsessed with this. And I saved up a shit ton of money and bought like a really nice one with like the little computer screen and everything. Holy shit. Yeah. It was like really wild because my uncle does it in Germany and in the mountains where, like i went with him a few times in the mountains where he lives um there were a lot of battles that took place like over right. thousands uh, well, of years i was just thinking like i would love to have your metal detector in my hometown right like, i would love to see what the hell's going on it's and really Virginia. cool like the ones that we would do them in austria and like find Ro- we found roman coins like things from thousands wow. of years ago it's really crazy you find like weapons my brain doesn't even i know compute it doesn't that. it's so wild and you're up in the hills where like nobody's ever been in hundreds of like nobody lives out there i feel like it's got to be a tough hobby because you also have to like i imagine understand like i'm sure there's like forestry laws on like being able to dig in certain areas and oh, stuff yeah, right i didn't think about that i don't know if that I don't know how it works. Like, are you Austria. allowed to just but dig my, a fucking hole if it says something's 50 feet down? But my uncle does, like, he does a lot of work in that field. So I think he probably has. Or maybe he only goes in places he knows is a Or his property. I'm not sure. Huh. Also, their town, Austria, is, like, so small and it's just mountains. So I'm sure, like, Nobody's I don't think anyone's doing anything. Should. But it's really dangerous because there are still mines. Oh. And so you have to be, like, he told me that while we were walking up this fucking mountain. I was like, okay, you go way ahead of me. <laughs> And he's like, no, no, you'll spot them. I was like, you'll spot them when they're exploding in your face. I'll spot them and I'll poke it and say, what's that? Like an idiot. Anyway. So I just, I love metal detecting. I haven't done it in like two or three years. If you wanted to get into it, I would do that with you. Let's do it. I'm not kidding. I would do that with you. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. So anyway, that was one of my. Renata, ship it on over. (sighs) Renata, ship it, please. Um, So anyway, so basically I got excited because he said, uh, he, Detective Headland was like several years ago. I got into metal detecting as a hobby, and I was like, oh, "Me too." <laughs> um, and I miss it very much, by the way. So I, I found some cool things. Um, so okay, I'll talk about it another day. I yeah. need to stop talking. I'm, about it. I'm intentionally I, not asking. I know. Questions. I keep wanting to tell you all the things I found. And I'm like, no, 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 not not today. So he went and metal detected, and search as he might, he never came across the ring in any sort of area near her and he knew what he was doing so he did not find he said i found a lot of bullets though <laughs> like, yeah that sounds about right um so remember amy bonner the former 15 year old police receptionist who had answered the phone mm, when yes. that guy was like i yes. just killed shannon so so now she's like 35 or something yeah right? two decades later exactly 35 7 something like that you're exactly right uh she had she said she had never stopped thinking about that phone call which i'm like me neither yeah how could you traumatizing um, she decided I'm going to solve this murder. Okay, Christine. <laughs> With my metal detector. Uh, Just coming into a, a, a police office post station with your metal detector <laughs> going, I'm here to crack the case. Oh my God. I'm such an asshole. That's the thing too, is like, I think I never talk about it. Cause I got, I was just got so made fun of in high school and stuff. I was like, not cool at all. That, I like, haven't caught you up at all lately on my genealogy stuff. Oh, so you and I could a be chat. a, we'll have a sleepover. Yeah. But so like, I couldn't talk about it in high school. I would get fucking bullied. So I never talked about it. Now I'm like, I bet I could talk about it without people fucking i'm surprised you didn't just hit people with it if they yelled at, at you me. oh i just cried and journaled about it uh, <laughs> and your, with your poetry i wrote poems about it um i'm so sorry so detective pat headland with the metal detector detective detective detector i guess detective a detector is is a is an is a machine a detective is a person right but he's a detective detector because he does both oh i see i see what's going on here i like it i'm trying to make it not and funny you're, you know what he is then an inspector detector i was gonna say inspector gad a de- detector inspector yes there it is one of those things he made a very smart move at this point he knew as he put it that people i love this line people would say things on a keyboard that they may not say in real life amen we've learned that very quickly um people are not always very nice that's the truth so he set up a facebook page and almost immediately a message popped up from amy she said she wanted to be involved with the page he told she told her she told him about her background and how she had gotten that call and how she really wanted to be involved and he told her okay you know you're a civilian you can be involved but any information you get like you really need to give it to us unfiltered um without expecting anything from us in return like he's like i can't promise you anything from our Mm -hmm. end since you're a civilian um so some people were starting to think amy had started the page and he was like 
great. Let's keep it that way. So instead of people thinking a police officer, a task right. force. That's smart. I know. I was like, that's actually really brilliant because people on the internet are not always filtering themselves. And especially right. if they just think some lady's running it, not, not like a cop. Exactly. So he's like, I'm happy to let them think that, let their guard down. And it worked. Amy received a message from a woman named Stephanie who said she had some information. She said she believes her family was involved in Shannon's murder. Mm. This family was the Hammond family, and they also had a bad reputation in town for incest, abuse, violence, etc. Stephanie describes the family's lake house. She says that our family has this lake house. It has a creek underneath it. Um, she says Shannon had been drugged and raped by several people in the basement of that house. Stephanie went on to say Shannon had been <clears throat> held there for several days before being thrown into a van and brought out, out into the woods where they ran her over with the car. Fuck. Wow. So Amy's like, all right, I'm coming over. I was like, Amy is kicking some ass here. She's ready to go. So Amy shows up. Uh, she sees the, the house. She sees the creek. And she's like, holy hell. Like, this might have been where Shannon, you know, had her last moments. Um, she called Pat Headland, who showed up. And he was like, okay, wow, this does actually match the story. There's this creek. Um, it's, you know, this family that's has a lot of arrest b- behind them and that kind of thing. Um, they enter the house cautiously and they immediately learn the house has no basement <gasps> and it has never had a basement. So it was a false lead. Oh, okay. Cause she said that she was right, tortured right, right. in the basement. In my head, it became a lifetime movie where like she trapped someone in her house she like made up a story to get them over oh to be like there's no basement no, and so then like she, locks the door so i think i kind of didn't get it at first but i think she remembered it from decades before and I she see. didn't live there anymore like she just called and said oh my family used to have this house gotcha so then they showed up at the house it is just like she described with the creek and stuff so maybe she was telling the truth but then there was no basement where she could have been held for days and they thought right. this, this is probably a faulty memory or, mm. or something like that um so then they dug into the family and nothing connected them at all to shannon so this seemed like kind of a false lead but i thought that was a very creepy turn Mm. and also like what is wrong with people sending in i mean maybe it was a false memory but if it was intentional to just screw them like screw up the investigation stop it yeah so obviously frustrating um the direct quote from detective headland was (laughs) amy was a pain in the butt sometimes but i can't fault somebody for being obsessed with a case when i'm the very same person because she, like, dragged them out there and all that, you know. Right. So Amy admits outright she was obsessed. She received death threats for, for the work she was doing. But she just saw that, she said, as a sign that she was getting closer to the truth. Meanwhile, Detective Headland says the task force was moving on to the next item on their agenda, which was exhuming the casket. They, oh. I know. They didn't want to look at Shannon's body. They wanted to read the letter from her friends that had been placed inside the casket on the day of the Interesting. funeral. Interesting. Because nobody had ever read, read it. those letters. Mm-hmm. Mm. So they, uh, there, were, there was a tip somewhere, like, maybe read the letters. There's something important in there. So they, uh, with permission from Robert, they exhume Shannon's body. They take out the handful of letters, which were from friends. They mostly said how much they loved her and would miss her. There was no confession. There was nothing. In the meantime, they were also looking at Shannon's body, and that's when Detective Mike Stevens said, I think we've discovered something, and they found some hair in her right hand. Oh. Uh, So he gave the impression, or he had the impression that maybe she had fought back against her attacker, and now they could do DNA (coughs) testing on that hair and see if it matched anybody. Um, But the hair was hers damn so, it i know this show like will get you and that's why i'm like taking notes and i'm like oh my god oh my god and then they're like anyway it was nothing and i'm like well so i but, just did all this okay now i'm gonna mislead all of you guys but it is happily interesting. i suppose but it is interesting because it's like you see like how they think they're onto something right and then it just so quickly it almost gives you a more true experience yeah. of the forensic side of like Oh, here's evidence. Never mind. Totally. Here's evidence. Never mind. Or like, we definitely know who did it. But then there's like no way this person could have done like, right. This guy is such a creep and he was seen with her and then nope, wasn't him. Like it's it, so I mean, it makes sense, especially with a case like this, where it was 22 years later and they were still following fake leads or false leads. Um, so, yeah, interesting turn of events. Nothing came of it, unfortunately. Um, so da 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 da. Meantime. They looked at Shannon's body. I said that. The hair was hers. So during the uh, investigation, detectives interviewed approximately 400 people, everyone they could possibly think of who had any connection to Shannon. 
And that is how they met Julia, Shannon's friend, who I mentioned earlier. Uh, she had been interviewed before by detectives, like, back in 89 when this first happened. Um, but she had not been interviewed since. So they were like, we want to interview her again and ask her for her story and see if there's anything more we can get gain from from an interview so the interviewer uh, she explains that she got off work at 10 on that night july 17th she knew shannon had some errands to run but they had planned to connect after 10 p.m to hang out so she went over to shannon's house around 11 30 and she wasn't home she headed over about every half hour this is us in high school like she just walked over every half hour to f- see if she was there just check in you couldn't facetime or anything right so she said she went over every half hour to knock on the house or knock on the door and see if she was in the house. She even went in the house at one point to be like, is she asleep? But she was nowhere to be found. The last time she went over was 2.45 a.m. on the 18th, the morning of the 18th. Now, if you recall, Paul and Matt Jones told investigators they took her home at around 12 midnight. Oh, okay. So police said somebody's not telling the truth here. Right. Somebody's not telling the truth. She says, I went over at 2.45. She was not there. Nobody was there. She wasn't asleep. Nobody was in the house. Mm. So then they begin to re-interview people from who were there that night. And one of the people they re-interviewed was named Lindsay Bradley. She was a friend of Shannon's, but she had also dated Paul Jones, one of the guys who supposedly dropped Shannon off at her house that night. I see. In her new interview, she admitted to police that one day she was driving around with Paul in his car and she noticed something in his ashtray. It was a class ring. Oh, boy. And at the time, she was upset, saying... Hey, you asked me on this date, like, I thought we were together, and now I see another girl's class ring in your car. Most right. 80s thing I've ever heard. Right. <laughs> I thought we were pinned. <laughs> right. Yeah, and so uh, I thought we were going steady. But yeah, so she sees this ring, and he, uh, she said his response threw her, threw her so much, and she still remembered it to this day. He responded, let's face it, she's probably dead. <gasps> what? And she was like, of course you would remember the that. fuck? Yeah. So she tells police this now. And uh, the new theory was that perhaps Paul and Matt had taken Shannon um, or had talked them her into going with them to another party spot. But when they arrived, there was no party. It was just the three of them. Mm. They believe there was some attempt at sexual advances and Shannon resisted and they refused to take no for an answer. And that's where things went south. Yikes. All of a sudden, uh, pieces were clicking into place. Um, but at the same time, this was all very circumstantial. They needed like actual solid evidence if they were going to take these people in. Mm hmm. And this is where Amy, our friend, comes back into the picture. Got it. She tells police through, that throughout her hundreds of investigations with everyone in town, multiple people told her she should talk to a woman named Jenny Corrigan. Okay. And Amy was like, Jenny Corrigan is one of my close friends. Why should I talk to Jenny? Uh-oh. And she goes and says, Jenny, everyone's telling me I need to talk to you about this. Like, what the hell connection do you have to this case? You know I've been... Wor- oh, that's the other thing. She knew she had been working on it for years. She's like, if you that had makes something... That shady. Yeah. She's like, if you had something to say, like, you know how obsessed I am. Right. And Jenny finds... That's like if I if I told you, I have a metal detector downstairs. <laughs> You'd be like, why would you not bring this up? What are you talking about? Or like, I know Patrick Stump. Did I never tell you? Right. Yeah. Like... <laughs> exactly. Just like keeping some information. Yeah. Did you know that I actually toured with Fall Out Boy? <laughs> Oh, don't do that to me. <laughs> so uh, she's like, Jenny, you got to fucking tell me what's going on. Jenny finally breaks down and says, I never wanted to say anything, but I know how Shannon was killed. Can she, you imagine if you are obsessed with a case that your best friend happens uh-huh. to know the information about? The actual answer. So she began crying hysterically. She broke down telling the story of what happened. Um, she said, I've been too terrified to tell this story for 20 years i'm like still scared wow um they were a little skeptical because it had been 20 years they were like why would she not have told this before um she explained she'd been way too terrified to come forward she was scared of retaliation um Mm -hmm. and they she said okay the other person you need to talk to is dean robinson so it turns out dean had also been an eyewitness to what had happened that night so the two of them together told police everything they knew on july 18th 1989 uh, the night Shannon went missing, Jenny wasn't hanging out with a group of friends. She was Jenny. What am I doing? You know what I keep doing now? Um, I keep doing this thing where I do talk to text while I'm like reading or watching something. And then I sometimes miss the corrections when I go back through the notes. <laughs> it says Jenny Oregon. <laughs> so sorry is that like your code name oh jenny corrigan i'm such an idiot it's literally jenny i was like how do you not know who jenny is we've just been talking about jenny i'm very confused between amy and jenny and it's just all these names okay jenny corrigan i see very basic 80s names they are like shannon jenny amy 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Heather, Heather, Heather. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. Uh, Jenny was not hanging out with the group of friends uh, that night in the woods. She was riding around with Dean Robinson. Mm. They came across a car that was parked and Dean started talking to the driver of the other car while Jenny like stayed in the passenger seat. Jenny heard the person in the other car identify themselves as Jones. Mm. So like Matt and Paul Jones and overheard him say they were looking for a girl. Which to police suggests that Shannon had escaped from them at some point. Oh, no. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. They were out in the dark. Uh, late. Goose cam. Goose cam. Look. Yeah. Rough goose cam. So some wild geese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wild geese indeed. So uh, they were basically hunting down Shannon because they said, have you seen this girl? We lost her. That's, I hate it. It's terrible. We're looking for her in the middle of the night. So Dean and Jenny left thinking like, okay, I mean, now looking back, they're like, holy shit. But at the time they were like, oh, they're probably all drunk and like, they just want to pick her up. Who knows? So Dean and Jenny leave and uh, the only logical explanation is that Paul and Matt had found her and caught up to her at some point. They beat her up, they raped her, and then they bludgeoned her to death. Later, Dean and Jenny were driving back through and they saw that later that night, they saw the same two brothers standing outside the same car. And they were like, that's odd. But this time, there was a girl laying on the ground, seemingly unconscious. Oh, shit. So Dean got out and ran up being like, can I help? Like, what happened? Thinking, you know, something terrible had happened. Yeah. And he, as he was running, he tripped on a branch. It's, you know, really dark out. And as he hit the ground, he looked at the body. It was like right in front of him. And it was Shannon. And she was dead. So at this point, Paul ran over and began kicking him in the face. And Matt came around the back of the car with a hammer intending oh, shit. to kill him because he's been a witness now right, to this. Right, right. Um, but Jenny, watching this from the passenger seat, began slamming on the horn on the steering wheel. Um, and when they realized somebody else was in the car, like somebody who they didn't know how many people were in the car. Right, right. And they're like, well, we can't kill this guy in front of whoever's in that car. Right. So instead, We can kick him in the face and throw a hammer at him, though. <laughs> right. And then peace out. So they jump back in the car. They didn't hit him with a hammer. They jump back in the car and just drove took off. off um so finally after three years they were like okay we know who did it and then arrested them had enough to arrest them and brought them to trial in june of 2014 so this is now 25 years after shannon's murder brother matt brothers matt jones 44 now and paul jones 42 were charged with premeditated first degree murder in shannon's death during the trial, a witness named Bernadette Clark testified that while at a party in 1990, she overheard the brothers bragging about running Sh- Shannon down with a vehicle and beating her with a log. She heard them say they'd gotten away with it, they'd been questioned and were let go, so it would never be pinned on them. When asked what she heard Paul say specifically, she said, quote, I heard him say that they had taken her out to a party spot. She discovered that there was nobody out there. She got out of the vehicle and they grabbed something as she started to leave. He said they chased her with the car, hit her, knocked her down with the mirror of the car, and then grabbed something from behind the vehicle, a log or something, and started to hit her with it. And then they took turns having sex with her. Oh, my God. Witnesses also claim. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. Witnesses also claim the brothers had made troubling statements um, in the years after the murder, including, quote, the bitch got what she deserved and a threat Matthew leveled at another woman at a bachelor party where he grabbed her throat and said he would, quote, put her in the ground like that bitch up north. That... Okay, so there's a second person. No, he grabbed this lady and said, like, oh, I'll put you in the ground like that bitch oh, up north. Oh, I thought, in my head, I thought he was talking about Shannon and was, like, that bitch up north. And I was like, there's a person before Shannon? Oh, no, 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 no. I see, I see what you mean. He, like, threatened mean. someone basically saying, like, I'll do what I'll do the same thing right. that I did to Shannon. Exactly. Um, another witness named Ronald King said he overheard one of the two brothers say, maybe we shouldn't have hit her so hard. She was looking good. She should have give us. She should have gave, gave us what we wanted. Oh, my God. And I think we're in the clear. In May of 2015, Matt Skip Jones was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life without parole, and Paul Jones was convicted of second-degree murder and sentenced to 30 to 75 years in prison. In 2017, the brothers attempted to have their convictions overturned uh, and failed. Thank Mm. God. So thanks to Amy and her badass civilian detective skills, Mm -hmm. uh, the case was solved. Wow. Um, Did the dad ever find out? Or was the dad... Did Shannon's dad pass away? No, he's in the episode. 
Oh, right. That was stupid of me. I didn't this, make the connection. Yeah, yeah. I this was, was like, like 2018. I, this, this, yeah. Okay. That's, I didn't know if maybe like, like he had passed on no, and like no, no, never no. found like out. Like her that... grandma's still alive. Like she was interviewed in this too. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Want to make sure he knew about the justice no, that no, was served. No, no, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, he was interviewed and um, his grandma or her grandma was, was also interviewed. Um, so at the time of the episode, when the episode came out, um, it was like this year or last year, Shannon would have been 45 mm-hmm. now today. Robert is sure she would have had children because she really wanted to be a mom someday. Uh, he says while he wishes more than anything that he could have could have his daughter uh, because she could have lived a long and happy life with kids of her own and he could have been a grandfather. He finds solace in the fact that after so many years, Shannon received the justice she deserved. And that is the story of the murder of Shannon Siders. That was a good story. I mean, it was a bad story, but it was a good story. Thank you, Rach Todd 21 for suggesting that as yeah. a non-holiday theme definitely not holiday brand no but and a lot of the stories were like that but then like and it was on christmas and i was like okay it's like well yay i don't want to like That's make great. this a weird goofy thing like uh. so anyway thank you for that and sorry for that also sorry for all the tangents too we haven't seen each other in a while so <laughs> yeah. it just it comes out um <laughs> i guess I guess that's it, right? I guess come buy tickets and see us live. We really want to see you guys. It'd be very cool to be able to say we sold out our entire tour. <gasps> we so really, that's my goal for this Yeah, this we year. We didn't sell out all our venues last year. We want to do it in 2020. That would be dope. So we had a sold out tour? Yeah. How so dope would that be? It would be dope. And it would be awesome also. Go to andthatswhatydrink.com slash live. All the cities are there. Um, we also have really cool tour art. So go to ATWWD yes. podcast to see the name of our tour and the logo very yep. exciting stuff we can't wait we also have a patreon and you can follow us on our social media all that good stuff yeah we're all over the place and that's why we drink boom <laughs> <laughs>